Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's wonderful to uh, see everyone both uh, online and in the room. Uh, and I'm very pleased to uh, welcome you all to the QMC PAC Users Workshop 2023, which is being held at uh, Argonne National Laboratory. Uh, I think it's been a little bit too long that we've had one of these workshops. So I'm really looking forward to hearing about the science everyone is doing over the next few days. Uh, as well as discussing some of the important changes we have coming up in the methodology and code. So really looking forward to a productive uh, two and a half days. Uh, I need to start with a few uh, acknowledgements, some additional uh, intro introductions. Uh, so I am uh, uh, Paul Kent, and I need to acknowledge uh, support from the U.S. Department of Energy, Basic Energy Sciences, uh, Computational Material Sciences Program, and the Center for Predictive Simulation of Functional Materials uh, that I direct and that many people uh, in attendance are part of and are working to improve uh, QMC and the, the QMC PAC code uh, in general. I also need to thank uh, Argo, uh, Anwar Benali and Susan Gregorich and probably many others behind the scenes at Argonne, particularly the, the AV people, for example, uh, for doing the logistics for this meeting. There's a, a lot that happens uh, to make these things uh, work. And I'd also like to thank uh, Anwar again, but also um, Dan Staros at Brown and Ray Clay from Sandia for helping to put uh, the program uh, together. So a little bit of an outline of this talk. Uh, I think we're all in the right place listening to the uh, conversations that have been happening before we got uh, going on this meeting. Uh, what I'm going to do here is just have a little bit about our workshop goals uh, and then go through you know, a variety of, of logistics uh, and housekeeping. Uh, there is, we'll come back to this in a moment, but uh, there is a little bit of homework to, to, to think about uh, for an open discussion we'll be having uh, tomorrow morning. And then when I was um, putting this, this introductory talk together, I realized actually that we haven't gone through sort of the fundamentals of how you interact with the, the QMC pack, uh, how you build the code, how you get support. Uh, some of the recent uh, developments for actually quite a while now. So that, so that we're all sort of discussing from a, a common foundation, uh, I'm gonna spend a, a, a good portion of this presentation reviewing that. Uh, and I know that many people in the room are familiar with this, but we know from the registration that not, uh, not everybody is. So I think it's important to go through. And if you are familiar, think about where I may have edited a little bit too strongly and I might have missed something that would be uh, useful for someone learning the method or new to the code uh, to be uh, aware of. Uh, then, you know, eventually wrap up. Uh, we'll have time for any questions, and then we'll get on to our first scientific presentation, which will be given by Andrea Zen uh, remotely, uh, but I see he's uh, online, so hopefully that goes well and the technology uh, is growing. So uh, workshop goals, I think this is very straightforward. Um, we're here to learn about some of the latest science done with uh, Corno Monte Carlo, I've already heard quite a few interesting conversations. Uh, to uh, learn about some of the new features and upcoming changes we're making to QMC pack. And these are important because they affect everybody. And so we also want to get everyone, everybody's feedback uh, into them as well. And then I think most importantly uh, is to you know, connect with other users of the methodology, uh, other, other developers as well. We've intentionally kept the agenda somewhat lightly scheduled. We've got some interaction collaboration time every day of the workshop. So, uh, you know, do with that what makes sense for you, whether it's talking to a developer, uh, building the code or, you know, planning a, a new collaboration. Uh, that's what it's there for. Now, what if you're looking for some more uh, introductory material to uh, Quantum Monte Carlo? Well, in 2021, uh, we gave a uh, Quantum Monte Carlo tutorial, uh, a virtual uh, tutorial over eight weeks. Uh, and that is all still fully available, uh, up to date uh, and online. So there's a comprehensive introduction to the methodology, molecular and solid state calculations, some fundamentals of statistics, workflows, and actually some more advanced uh, topics that you'll be seeing updated versions of in this presentation. 
Uh, and there's also about 12 hours of recorded uh, tutorials on YouTube. They've got about 9,000 views currently, so they are they are being uh, viewed and seem to be helpful for people. Uh, feedback on those is, of course, a welcome. Uh, the way to get through to, to all the presentation materials and links to those recordings uh, is on this sort of GitHub URL, which is similar to the current workshops URL. Uh, and one difference from this workshop is that for the tutorial, we made some virtual machines. So you could run QMCPAC and all the other ways, ways of generating trial wave functions, such as Quantum Espresso, PySCF, and so on, uh, all ready to run without building the code. And I actually checked a couple of days ago, that's all still there and are working. Uh, so if you're, uh, you know, want to do some of the more introductory materials, uh, that's there. Now let me talk through uh, the agenda here, just to sort of set up some sort of expectations. Uh, so we're we're here now doing a bit of welcome and introduction, uh, and then the days are structured with uh, typically you know research talks in the morning or afternoon, and then some more uh, methodological presentations uh, the other half of the day. So we'll be hearing from Andrea Zen for a break, Fernando Reberito, uh, and then. Uh, substitute for David Seppley. Uh, and then this afternoon, this is an important session. Uh, we uh, are currently working towards a new major release of QMC pack, uh, what we version uh, 4.0. Uh, and so we're going to be describing uh, the changes uh, that, are, that are happening there. Uh, so I'm going to give an overview talk. Uh, Jaron Kroger will be giving a talk focused on workflows and driving this from uh, Nexus. And then Elo will give a talk more focused on the performance uh, of this uh, version uh, of the code, because one of the main developments is wider support for GPUs without harming the CPU support as well. And we really like uh, people's uh, feedback uh, on this because uh, it does affect everybody. There were some changes to the input that we're also making actually based on feedback we've received to make it a little bit less uh, confusing. We have a break and then this afternoon we'll have a poster session and then our first uh, open collaboration session. Uh, now tomorrow we have a discussion uh, involving everybody. Uh, I'll go through a little bit about logistics uh, for that. Uh, this is one of the open sessions we have to, to discuss basically how to improve QMC pack. So any aspect uh, that, that seems to be important for you, that is the time to mention it if you haven't mentioned it in another venue already. Uh, we have a research talk from uh, Daniel Wines, and then in the afternoon, we're going to be covering a variety of, I think, very important uh, developments. So further expansion of spin-orbit coupling uh, in QMC pack, the development of additional correlation consistent effective core potentials, which is really, of course, fundamental to everything we do. If we don't have the potential, the alternative is to run use, use all, to run all electron or perhaps use a less validated potential which is, uh, of course, introduces some questions. Uh, presentation on orbital optimization, which is becoming available both for molecules and solid state systems. Uh, and then developments in geometry optimization and a more, maybe more research focused one on the ability to get Fermi surfaces from QMC. Uh, and then in the evening, I note that we have a, uh, a trip to uh, an outside restaurant and we'll be carpooling to that and we'll sort out the logistics on the day, but it's not far away. Uh, so I think that will be straightforward to handle. Uh, and then on Thursday, uh, we're going to have, uh, first of all, announcement of the, the best poster. I'll say a little bit more about that shortly. And then we will have five research presentations. I'd like to thank everyone for putting these uh, together. Uh, the first from Yasmin will, will be uh, virtual. So we had the safety warning from Anora about what to do in the event of a fire or some sort of mishap there. Uh, this is the sort of warning about uh, Zoom. Uh, so just a note here, you know, we are recording these with the permission of everyone to, to upload in, in sections or on YouTube. Uh, that says we don't have to be, shouldn't be completely quiet. So questions and interaction uh, does improve the talks. I think there's few enough people that uh, if you're online, you can unmute and just jump in with a question. I'm 
we'll see if that audio is working shortly. But if you're in the room, I was informed by the AV people that we'll need to grab a microphone and pass that around so that the people online uh, can also hear. Just a sort of general uh, warning here, you know, if you do join the Zoom meeting and you're in the room, please take care to switch off the speakers on your laptop, switch off the microphone and switch off the uh, camera. And uh, I think we have all got stories about people unmuting by accident, but do be do be very careful on this, uh, particularly if you're using a mobile device, for example, it's very easy to hit the unmute or the camera button. Um, we would prefer not to have to edit the videos, so just take care. Thanks. Uh, next up, but uh, just as important, uh, I'd like to thank everyone who brought a poster. I see we've got some of the, the stands up already, and so hang those uh, as you know the logistics allow uh, today. So we have the, the session this afternoon. I hope we can leave the posters up the second day as well. I'm seeing a confirmation for that. Uh, and this is a note to, if you're in person, please look out for an email to vote for what you consider to be the best poster. So this will be a, a popular election. Uh, so, so do vote. Uh, um, there'll be a, a gift card prize for the top poster and uh, we'll announce the winner Thursday morning. All right, so this is the, the discussion uh, that I mentioned earlier, and this is the sort of a little bit of homework request uh, for everybody, and I think it'll be a straight, fairly easy piece of homework uh, for everyone. So tomorrow morning, we've got 90 minutes on the schedule to have, you know, an open discussion around improving the capabilities or scientific probability, productivity of QMC pack. And I don't want to sort of bias the sample ahead of time. I want to be clear that you know, on the developer side, we've actually got a lot of ideas, I have a long list of our own of things that we think really need to be uh, Im improved, uh, but we want to hear from you, right? So this is a, a moment to, to, to voice uh, what you think would, in particular, for example, help your research, right? Um, what could we do? Uh, to QMC pack or perhaps some of the support infrastructure that would most help it. Uh, what could we add in a moderate time frame, right? That would be very helpful, say six months or a year, something that's practical, right? So you can say solve the sign problem, we'd like to do that, but that would probably take longer. Um, and then another way of thinking about this, you know, what is the top thing that we need to fix, right? So if there is something that is absorbing your time that you think we could do a better job of, or maybe there's a capability that uh, another methodology has that perhaps could be uh, in QMC, you could see a way of doing that. That's something that we should discuss. And to, you know, help having a full discussion, uh, we're not going to be recording that session, so so don't hold back. You know, there's never any stupid questions, but if you're wondering, you know, why something is the way it is, uh, that might be a, a good time to ask that if you don't catch a, a developer uh, in the interim. Uh, just here's some topics to, to to think about, and I'd you know request everyone, uh, you know, write jots down a couple, uh, and if we do that, I think we'll have more than enough to, uh, to 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 talk about. So science capabilities, ease of use, uh, workflows are very important. We don't really have a a dedicated a Nexus session here beyond describing um, the developments for version uh, four. Uh, but if you've got input there, that would be helpful. Uh, perhaps there's a new electronic structure code or quantum chemistry code that we don't interface with right now that you think would unlock an important capability. You know, let us let us know about that. And then perhaps if you're you know new to the code, you know what was the how did you find the tutorials? Um, what was what was good, what was uh, missing, and we could do a better job of, uh, you know, and then sort of general support topics. Perhaps you have uh, an example from another project. Uh, we can import a particular tool or technique or set up a meeting uh, that they are finding successful. So the request is, is, you know, really to jot down a few points so that success of that session is going to depend on, a, you know, everyone weighing in. Uh, it can be a little bit tricky to get a conversation flowing with this many people, uh, but it will help determine the direction of QMC pack. Uh, and just a heads up, the way I think we'll do this is to respect the people who are online, quite a few of whom are joining from a different time zone. We're, I think we'll go through everyone who's on Zoom first, 
right? And then work around uh, the room. And what I'd suggest is that, you know, people briefly introduce themselves, optionally say about your research, you know, that's, that's up to you. And then say, you know, the few things that you think we uh, need, to need to improve or may, you know, make suggestions there. And I think that will be more than enough basis for that discussion. All right, now I think I'm mostly done with the uh, housekeeping. Uh, is there anything else I need to mention, Anwar? Seems good. Uh, there are coffee breaks. We will be walking to lunch in the cafeteria. There's coffee at the back if anyone needs anything else. Thank you. All right. So moving on to the uh, the bits and bits and bytes and uh, the Conte Monte Carlo uh, aspects. Uh, so hopefully everyone has found found this and, and seen this in the emails. Uh, but we have a dedicated GitHub repository for this workshop, and that's gradually getting populated. You've probably seen the updates with the, the presentations. We'll add links to recordings there as they uh, become available, uh, some of the examples uh, and data files and so on for the workshop. So obviously I grabbed this screenshot uh, when it was empty, uh, but there's quite a bit there now. Now, just to move on to a little bit of the, the fundamentals, so we are not providing any computational resources for this work workshop or uh, you know, pre-cooked uh, virtual, machi virtual machines. And there's a couple of reasons behind that. Uh, one, of course, to be honest, is that you know, a lot of changes were coming in in the last uh, few days. So that was always going to be a squeeze. Uh, but the other is that we really encourage everyone to build the latest, latest development version, latest version of the source code on their home machines, you know, if you if you have access, right, or to, or you could also build them on your laptop as well, and then try out running uh, the batch store performance uh, version four code that we're going to be describing uh, this afternoon. And of course, the reason behind this is that if you were to run into a problem, there are many many people who will be able to help out with this here. So that's the idea. If you're able to build on your home machine, we could help diagnose any issues. Uh, that said, nothing has really changed around that. So if you've, if you've built a tool, you know, in the last few years, nothing should have changed, but we should still uh, verify and check that's all right. Uh, so what would you do? Uh, maybe you're used to downloading the tarball. Well, uh, you clone the, the GitHub repository. That by default has the, you know, the development branch as, as the default. And you can, you know, CD into the build directory if you wish or make another one. And then you use you know, the standard CMake line, which hopefully you've been using for the last you know, five plus years. Nothing has changed here. So uh, we always recommend passing in the compilers through the MPI wrappers. Don't, don't rely on anything auto detecting. This is the supported uh, route. Uh, and then, okay, so this font isn't very good. This is a J here. Obviously you would like to do a parallel build and adjust the number just to suit the machine you're on and respect the other people who may also be uh, on that machine. Different sites have got different uh, rules around that. And then we always recommend to run the deterministic tests. So these should only take a few minutes. Like, like in one of our machines, it's like two minutes uh, to do all of those. And if you see failures there, that needs investigating, right? Because they should all pass. And if, you know, if it's all red, probably there's some issue with MPI or running a job or something like that. But uh, normally it's very binary. They either all work or, or they all don't. But that's really worth doing. And if there are some failures in there, that pattern helps us learn what's going on. But it uh, should be straightforward. Um, the manual is, of course, online at qmcpack.readthedocs.io. And there's a whole installation section in there with examples for Ubuntu, for example. Uh, many and many common workstations and supercomputers. And also, if you look in a directory that's called config, there are build scripts for many common supercomputers, including some very new ones like Frontier, for example. Uh, and you can either use those directly or use those as inspiration or point your own system administrator who's, who's installing software for you towards those, right? Because sometimes you have to have someone install software, but they may not be so familiar with the methodology. So that should just speed things up. And we're happy to add others. Now, how to get support? Uh, obviously, at this workshop, probably talking to the person either to the left or the right uh, is, is one way of uh, getting that right now. But, but long term, what should you do? 
Uh, the preferred way of doing this now is really to open an issue on the QMC pack uh, GitHub repository. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, you know, in addition, obviously, to being able to track it, I like that it's open to the world, right? Everyone can see it and other people can weigh in and either solve the problem or say, I'm seeing something similar too. So that helps speed things up. And then also long-term, the hope is that search engines will be able to route uh, you know, people there if there's a similar issue. So that's the preferred route. Uh, I've got access to GitHub. Uh, we also have, of course, the QMC Pack Google group, which you're welcome to use. We put, we're putting all the announcements there as well. And I have my uh, fingers crossed that Google doesn't move this service to the graveyard as they've done for a lot of uh, products. Hopefully that will keep, keep going as it is useful to have that alternative. And then, of course, you know, please you know, email a developer or talk, talk, to, talk, talk to someone. Uh, of course, if you email, um, not everyone else can see that uh, can see that message, which might be a plus or a minus. And, uh, you know, if they're on holiday or busy with uh, deadlines, they won't get back, won't be able to get back to you. Another topic. All right, good, we're good. Uh, so just one request. I think everyone in the room is, is doing a, a great job of this, but um, actually as with any other scientific software code, um, to sh we need to sh be able to show the utility of the method and code to our funders. And we need to do that, we need to provide them some metrics and they're very open to that. And the most straightforward ways of doing this are to cite the citation papers. And you know these are printed out at the top of the, top of the, um, the QMC pack run. Uh, we paid to make sure these are both open access. So wherever you are in the world, you can, uh, can read and get access to these. Uh, if, if you cite those, that really helps us. Uh, that, uh, as I said, that citations help funding, help keep the show on the road. And then also, uh, we've learned that that stars on GitHub repositories also can count, apparently. So if you can star, if you think it's worthwhile, uh, consider starring the main GitHub repository. There's about 250 there, and it would be nice to see this this line go up a little bit more. Of course, if you've already starred, you know, please don't don't click again. All right, so there's been a lot of interesting uh, science applications using um, QMC Pack over the last few years. And uh, these are a sample of three that I showed at an IPAM workshop in the spring of this year, just to illustrate some of the variety that's going on. Uh, and also I'm gonna point out, you know, what was uh, some of the methodological things that were, you know, relied upon uh, for these, because uh, there's really, I think there's really been noteworthy change over the last few years. Uh, so first of all, we have this investigation of uh, chromium triiodide led by uh, Dan Starus and, and, and many others uh, out, of, out, of, out of Brown and uh, Oak Ridge and elsewhere. Uh, and the important thing is not only is this an investigation of a monolayer of uh, chromium triiodide, but the geometry for this monolayer was found within Quantum Monte Carlo, right? So we are starting to be able to you know, obtain ground state geometries, at least of systems with not too many degrees of freedom uh, within the methodology. So that's an important advance. And we learned that sort of 2D materials are sort of a sweet spot because they're not too complicated compared to an interface or a catalytic system, uh, for, for example. And we're gonna be just learning about uh, the methods behind that tomorrow afternoon. Uh, this is the work from, uh, well, uh, Hongwei Yu and, and many, many others, including uh, David, David Seppley, and I think multiple, I think we may have three authors in the, in, in the room uh, uh, for this paper, look doing path integral calculations for the phase diagram of, of hydrogen. And to be clear, there's a lot that's, this study relied on a lot of things with are not QMC pack, lots of other developments through the path integral and so on. But it used data from QMC pack for a machine learned potential. So that's starting to become an option. And of course, you know, behind these three examples, of course, in the background, you know, the code has to run uh, and it does. And so this is an example, not of a simple molecular or solid state system, but a challenging system where we need really accurate uh, results uh, because of all the ambiguities in both other methodology as well as even the experiment. And then finally here on the right, also touching on uh, machine learning, but in a different way, there's a paper by um, Bing Huang, 
Anatoly von Lidenfeld, Jaron Krogel, and Anwar Benali in, in JCTC uh, uh, earlier this year, uh, constructing a machine learning scheme to uh, upscale and infer quantum chemical properties using results from diffusion Monte Carlo. And one of the things I found really noteworthy about this paper is that there's over a thousand small molecules run in diffusion Monte Carlo. So one of the things we learn about that is that, you know, the code will do it, right? This methodology is robust for that kind of scale of uh, calculation uh, these days. And I don't think historically uh, we could say that. So I now like to touch on uh, sort of a few of the, a, a few developments. So some of these uh, we'll be hearing again uh, later in, in the week. So typically uh, Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, but I want to highlight them now uh, because the people are here and you can talk to them before their talk. So this is that they don't get uh, overloaded immediately after giving uh, their talk. I also want to highlight a couple of developments that uh, if we had more time on the, the schedule, we might have an additional talk on them, but the people are here. So you'll feel free to, to seek them out. Uh, so first of all, of course, it's been the development of correlation consistent effective uh, core potentials, which are available at shooterpotentiallibrary.org. Of course, there are other potentials available and QMC pack will use those uh, and so on as well. Uh, so Benjamin Kincaid from NCSU will giving a presentation on this uh, tomorrow. So there's been lots of developments over the last couple of years, including the development of softer potentials to facilitate doing plane wave calculations and generation of trial wave functions uh, there. Um, I'm sure requ requests are being taken for uh, new potentials. And if you look at this uh, picture of the periodic table now, you see, you know, if we ignore the F block, maybe we're about halfway through, uh, sort of at, at this point. So this is actually a big change from you know where we were just a, a couple of years ago. Uh, I note there's a, actually a big effort behind every potential. Uh, there's still quite a bit of human work to set up in particular the quantum chemistry calculations to do the validation. So you know when you use these, um, you know please cite the appropriate papers. That's really appreciated and, and really helps. Actually, we've seen these used not just in the quantum Monte Carlo community, but also in the quantum chemistry community. Uh, and they seem to have been quite successful and we want to keep building uh, on that. But you know, if you see here that there's a potential that would that's missing that would really help your work, you know, seek out Ben and, and make a vote for it. Uh, so another very important development, uh, and I want to, to flag this up because I think we could be making more use of it uh, as, a, as a group. Uh, and that is the introduction of some relativistic effects and, and spin orbit interaction uh, into the application. So Cody Melton is giving a presentation on this uh, tomorrow. Uh, and so this is a very large effort to have uh, spinner uh, wave functions, to have the spin orbit potential, and then uh, observables that depend on the wave function also need updating and in some cases rederiving. Uh, but this capability is there now. And I think many of us have been on the receiving end of a reviewer's report that says, well, what about spin orbit, for example, right? Uh, and now we have a way of including this directly in the calculations. Uh, so that's available. Uh, and just as some example, right? Sometimes it's it can be very important in a place you're not expecting. And sometimes they can be places where it's not as important as other people are alleging. So it, it needs to be tested. So for example, this uh, is, is a result on the iodine a dimer, which you might not think spin orbit has a, a huge role in it. But first of all, I know there's a lot in this in this figure. The, the most accurate results here uh, aligning with experiment come from the spin orbit diffusion Monte Carlo calculation. So that's nice to see. But also in this study, we see that if you didn't include that, uh, you know, you get some of these other lines here and there's actually quite a large error in the binding energy by not having spin orbit. And that really surprised me the first time I saw it. Uh, also a surprise, um, the, the first uh, study in periodic solid state systems was done by Ghani and Berdiev and co-workers on looking at ruthenium trichloride. And this was a place where in the literature, there's been a lot of discussion that spin orbit was very important for determining the band gap. Well, it turned out to determine the band gap, you needed to do a good job of electron correlation, which of course Diffusion Monte Carlo generally does a, a, good, a good job of. Uh, and the effect of a spin orbit, that's the difference between these blue and the red columns. This is the Diffusion Monte Carlo result here, is actually relatively modest. 
So that is uh, at least a, a clean answer for the, the physics happening in the, the system. So that capability is there. And if you're interested in using it, I definitely suggest seeking out uh, Cody ahead of you know, Wednesday after afternoon. Now, something that we, we, we don't have uh, on the schedule, but is, is an important capability for getting calculations done is the uh, hybrid uh, basis set, which has been in the code for a number of years now. And this is something to consider if you're running out of memory, because of course, if the trial wave function doesn't fit on the memory of the machine, there's no quantum Monte Carlo uh, happening, or you have to find some alternative trial wave function that would fit. Uh, so this is sort of a modified augmented plane wave style uh, representation, and this was, paper was done by uh, Yilo a couple of year, years ago now with an improvement on an earlier scheme. And the essential thing about this method is to, instead of using a, a regular, a fine regular mesh, as we do here, to represent the spline uh, wave functions, which is what we normally use in solid state calculations, to instead uh, have a few have some different regions. So around atomic cores, uh, there should be an, an, an atomic core where the laser pointer is right now. Uh, we represent the wave function with spherical harmonics. Then there is an interface region where there is a blending with the wave uh, with a spline wave function again. But this can now be on a much coarser grid because all the wiggles in the wave function tend to be around the atomic cores. So this then means this grid can be a lot coarser and there's a huge uh, memory saving. And this can sometimes be the difference between being able to do the calculation and not. So just here's some real an analysis done by Kehan Saritas and, and Jaron Kroger looking at chromium triiodide. I think this is a monolayer with a healthy cutoff and quite a large amount of a uh, healthy amount of vacuum to do a good converged calculation. And we see, you know, just a two, two by two of this, 500 electrons, you know, close getting towards 200 gigabytes for the spline wave function. If you do the hybrid basis, it's down to 22. So that's nearly an order of magnitude reduction. 331,000 electrons, that's nearly 400 gigs. With hybrid basis, that gets it to 49, and that would be enough to run on this laptop, for example. This is a 64 gig laptop, so we could actually run that calculation here. Probably not to a small error bars, but it would fit. And then this last case, you know, it takes 700 uh, by default. And, you know, most of the machines I have access to don't have more than 512 gigs on the, on the main memory at all. So that just wouldn't, wouldn't run. So this is very important. And if you're running into these sorts of problems, the methodology is here, um, as are the people uh, behind it. Uh, a new capability that I'm really excited about that we're going to be hearing about uh, tomorrow from Joshua Townsend uh, and Amanda Zumi is orbital optimization. This is a much requested and desired feature that we know other Corner Monte Carlo codes have had in some form for a long time. Uh, and so there's been a big effort from actually a lot of people to, to do the plumbing to enable this. Uh, and it's actually quite a lot of uh, plumbing to connect up all the parameters to the optimizers uh, and so on. And this is really important because it enables a systematic reduction of nodal error in the wave functions and potentially allows one to do a calculation that is weakly or even not dependent on the starting point for the calcula calculation. So this is a really important capability. Uh, it's available for molecular systems and the, the spline wave capability is being developed right now. And it's available, I think, with some combinations of real and complex today. And we've done a great deal of, of testing on this, and it seems to, to match the, the literature values and general physical and chemistry behaviors uh, where, it, where it should um, in molecular tests. And I'll talk through an example here. And to run this, you do have to use the latest uh, development version. So for some of the things we're discussing, the most recent release would be enough, but you really do need to pull the most recent uh, version. Uh, we're putting a lot of uh, checks on this. Just as an example, uh, these were run by uh, Mark Doing, uh, looking at the carbon-2 dimer run all electrons. So there's no shooter potential here. Uh, and this is a system which has got quite a bit of multi-determinant character in addition to dependence on the orbitals uh, that are used that the QMC community has, has attacked in various ways uh, over the years. So what we see here in you know, energy scale against various uh, efforts from the, from the literature. So here we have Hartree-Fock at the top left, 
And at the bottom right is the estimated exact energy uh, for the system. And I should emphasize, you know, the goal here is to do a test, not necessarily do the most accurate calculation to 100 digits and then so on. Uh, these are various examples from um, papers by Julian Toulouse and Cyrus Omegar uh, and Koga, various basis sets. And let me just talk through the most recent QMC pack results. And these have got full determinants of the orbitals done through finding rotations of virtual and uh, occupied states. We'll be hearing about that uh, tomorrow, as well as the, the expansion coefficients of the determinants. So we'd expect if this optimization is done consistently, as we add more freedom to the wave function and optimize, we should get a lower energy, right? This is this is VMC. And so that's what we see in a quad zeta four polarization basis. That's these points in VMC going up to a thousand determinants. Diffusion Monte Carlo lowers the energy further. And importantly, it gets the same general trend as was seen by uh, Julian Toulouse and Sarah Sumergar quite some uh, years ago now. And you know the last wave function is a little bit larger than the largest they run, and it gets you know the same or slightly lower energies. So that's really encouraging, and I think that opens up a lot of possibilities in chemical applications in addition to solid state applications. So uh, that's there, and I hope people can make great use of it. Now that was about improving the denodal surface of the wave function through stochastic optimization. There's actually another way that we're not presenting at this uh, workshop, but we do have the full workflow for, and if you're interested in this, uh, track down uh, Anwar uh, Benali. Uh, and this is the use of selected configuration interaction to improve trial wave functions. So selected configuration interaction and configuration interaction schemes in general, right, they provide a way to systematically improve the wave function, adding many more determinants, and they do it in a deterministic way. So there's no stochastic sampling here, at least in um, most selected CI uh, schemes. So this is this is a deterministic way of generating a wave function of increasing accuracy. Of course, you do have to pay for that, right? But it is another option, right? Um, and the workflow is fully there, going via um, quantum package, both for molecules and uh, sometimes overlooked the connection is that also for solid state systems. So this can be done in solids. Uh, and of course, you can apply it in primitive cells, not necessarily not you don't necessarily have to do a, a very large supercell to learn something about the wave function. So that's there. Uh, let me walk through some examples here. So this left result is not a QMC pack result. Uh, this is just to illustrate the method which was really pioneered by Michel Caffarel and co-workers, this paper on the, on the water molecule. We have full CI, and here we have the dmc sipsi result, which is, of course, below, so it's improving on the CI wave function, and they were able to get out sort of a record accuracy uh, energy for uh, the water molecule. Uh, but this can also be implied to the solid state. So here's a test on primitive cells of, you know, a few solids here in this topmost curve. Uh, reflects uh, the full uh, multi-determinant results. So if you add more multi-determinants, you get more correlation energy. Uh, this is done in primitive cells, but then here on the right, uh, already a couple of years ago, uh, we're able to show that it's possible to, to do this methodology uh, well enough and affordably enough to uh, get uh, study solids in the thermodynamic limit and do a good enough uh, extrapolation. So this is an example uh, in carbon diamond, which already has quite a good nodal surface, but systematic improvement of the atom, systematic improvement of the uh, solid to get very good cohesive energies. And you know, on the graphs, you can really directly see the improvement. And uh, another reason why I'm mentioning this, and I don't want to sort of bury the lead here, this may have been missed unless you're watching the commit logs really carefully. There's been a lot of improvement in LCAO evaluation and multi-determinants over the last six months or a year or so. So these, some of these calculations, which were a little bit heroic and expensive at the time, are now much more efficient. So this capability is there, and it would be great to see more use of. And of course, to do the solids, uh, this meant that we have a periodic Gaussian, uh, periodic LCAO code also available. And I know there's a lot of other many body methods and research projects that are building uh, techniques off uh, PIACF, for example, and that capability. 
So this is a way of getting the same wave functions into QMC pack and perhaps doing comparisons on a similar basis. So that's also there. And of course, periodic LCAO doesn't take much memory at all. So that, that's one way of fitting your calculation. Uh, just begin to wrap up here before we move on to the next topic. Uh, note on contributing. Uh, I really want to emphasize that contributions of any size whatsoever are really welcome. They're worthwhile and they, you know, they really do add up uh, over time. Uh, so the way to make a contribution, you know, make a pull request on, on GitHub. There's a lot of tutorials on how to do this. So I'm not going to walk uh, through it. If you're editing a text file, you can just click edit uh, these days, right? It's very straightforward. Uh, if you need help, you know, do ask. Small code updates are very, very welcome. Um, you know, there are parts of the output, for example, that are really modern and nicely formatted, others less so, which need a bit of work. And if you improve that, that would benefit everybody in this room and online, you know, running this, this code, even though it's a quote unquote, a small uh, change that would help and be welcome. Similarly, the documentation update, but updates are very welcome. I know we've got some broken links uh, in there, we translated from LaTeX to Markdown a few years ago to have the online version, which seems to be working a lot better than the previous sort of LaTeX uh, PDF version. And uh, there's going to be a lot of updates needed around this version for uh, transition. Uh, so if you spot something, uh, let us know. Um, if you want, if you're working on a larger contribution, it's always helpful to chat with the developer uh, first, so we can say whether something's already being tried. And things to watch out for or making a github issue so that other people know excuse me and we do have some developer documentation um so check those if you're working on a larger feature in particular and we will be expanding those to go into a little bit more detail like you know what do we need around testing uh for example uh, and i'll note you know I, I showed a couple examples of the citation papers earlier in this intro presentation we will be writing a new citation paper uh, I guess next year, after we've got through some, some some major deadlines, and importantly, after that, version four is is out and stabilized and, and polished, uh, based on everybody's feedback. And as before, I think the right thing to do is give everyone who's contributed, you know, the opportunity to be a co-author on that paper. I think we want to recognize everyone's contributions because whether large or small, however we measure that, they all add up. Uh, and help make a productive uh, QMC code and a good community. So I see I'm I'm running slightly late here. Just a final uh, a final note about you know releases. Uh, unless we decide otherwise, we you know we're going to keep going at the fast pace uh, that we've been going for the last few years. So three or four releases a year. Uh, there's a lot of development happening. So thanks to everyone who's contributing. I, I see a lot of people who make pull requests out in the, the audience here. Uh, I checked the statistics. There were a bit over 330 merged pull requests in the last 12 months. So that's not quite one a day. It's just a, a little short, right? So this is one of the fastest developed sort of codes in electronic structure that I'm aware of. And uh, many of these changes are quite large, uh, actually. Um, if anyone is uh, working at an institution where like the system administrator will only install an official released version. You note that the way we do the development, we try to keep develop really solid. So most of the time we can release a new version on request. Obviously we've got a little bit of a transition state with version four right now, but if it would help us help you to make, you know, the, what would it be? 3.17.2 or something like that. Uh, we, we can do that uh, straightforwardly to help you out. And also do please, um, you know, keep an eye out in the, the change log. We, you know, write that by hand to make it human accessible. And there's a lot of updates that, that are in there that we, we can't always mention in the topmost summary. So for example, um, Paul Yang, thank you very much for the improved 2D support over the last couple of versions, right? That, that helps everyone having that capability uh, available again. So that's all I had for this intro talk. I hope we're all on the, we've all got a common foundation now. Uh, any questions, either on what I presented or perhaps something that I edited out and shouldn't have? <laughs>